Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on another video. In today's video, I thought I would give you an update on locum doctor life because it has been a while. I think I did a video on locuming when I first started a year ago. A lot has happened since then. Um, I've had my appraisal, so my yearly appraisal, and during my appraisal, while I was writing it up and prepping for it, I just I had a chance to reflect on the last 12 months and how it's gone and how I found it. I realised that I'd learned some super useful information that I would love to share. I know that a lot of you guys who watch some of my videos are medics or are aspiring medics. Hopefully some of this information will be useful to you. If you're not, you'll love a good nose in other people's <laughs> lives and jobs. So yeah, enjoy hearing my business. <laughs> If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up, click subscribe for more videos, and don't forget to join me over on my blog, www.drsarahsiena.com, um, and on my Instagram and Twitter and Facebook too. All right, without further ado, let's get into the video. I am a junior doctor. I graduated in 2017. I think, yeah. <laughs> did the first year of my foundation training and then I withdrew from my F2 job to work as a locum doctor. The reason I did this was because I wanted to pursue other things, mainly athletics, which I have been doing for the last year. Now, working as a locum doctor basically means that you're not in training. So you are picking up shifts and jobs here and there, but you're not formally in training. Um, and it was a bit scary to do because I did it earlier than people usually do. Um, but I basically am at the SHO level, so senior house officer level. So just to... A standard junior doctor that goes around you know reviewing patients doing all the paperwork and bits and bobs because a locum doctor you can get jobs through agencies you can apply online or you can work straight with the directorate so the people who run the rota of the hospital that you want to work at and um, i decided to work with directorate because i was already familiar with that system i already knew the people who run the directorate i really get on with them they're lovely and um, so i just asked them if there were any jobs coming up and they let me know and it was actually really easy to find work so one of the things i've been scared of was that it would be really difficult for me to find work and it would be stressful but it was really easy because I had already you know worked in a number of different hospitals and specialties and um, it was quite simple to simply pick up a job there are a lot of gaps in the NHS there are a lot of doctors needed and um, so yeah it was good that was not stressful at all I did almost sign up with an agency at the start of the year but then because I was getting jobs from the directorate straight through I decided to stick with that and especially because agencies take five pounds per hour ish of your wage whereas if you go straight to directorate you get the whole wage to you know to keep you cut out the middleman basically however directorate pay monthly not every month I've learned. <laughs> agencies tend to pay weekly so there are definitely benefits to being with an agency but I can only speak about work through directorate. They're quite similar jobs to be honest I worked the exact same job as another guy who I obviously worked with um, and he was doing it through an agency I was doing it through directorate you know it was the same job so you'll still get similar jobs you'll just be paid differently whether through the middleman or straight from the hospital. So there's actually something else I'd wanted to talk about in this video that I kind of totally forgot to mention, sorry. Um, that is that when you are working as a locum doctor, you can either pick up long-term gaps. So for example, you work on a specialty for six weeks or four months, um, or you can pick up random shifts here and there. So mostly on-call shifts, the random gaps that they get in the rotor last minute. Um, so for most of the year I did long term gaps so I would be on a specialty for at least six weeks um, but there was a period where the specialties available um, weren't the ones that I specifically wanted to do um, and so I thought I'll give it a month and just pick up random shifts and see how that goes because I knew a few locums who worked like that. Um, now there are a few pros and cons to this. I'd say that the pros are that you generally get paid more for the last minute shifts. They generally send out a higher rates for these shifts because they want them covered so much. Um, but some of the cons that I found were that I just couldn't plan my life in advance. So obviously with training, with other commitments like my church band, um, it would mean that I already had plans. So when they would ask me if I could cover, you know, nights starting from tonight, it was like, no, I can't. <laughs> and so I found that really difficult, kind of not being able to plan my life in advance and not knowing when and where I'd be working. Um, also, I found that I was just much, because of that, I was much less likely to pick up shifts. So when I got to the end of the month, I had actually worked a lot less hours than I had been working in previous months. Um, 
it was okay because on average I would you would be paid about ten pounds an hour more per shift, and um, so I ended up with only slightly less money than I usually would have at the end of a month, and um, but that was difficult. I started off my work on gastroenterology, so I did the medical specialty of gastro, which was great. It was so much fun. I learned loads. I really wanted to do that. My friends from uni had done that specialty and they loved it, so I really wanted to check it out. So I did six weeks of that. Then I moved on to toxicology for a few months and worked on that for a while. I did some geriatrics, which I had already done. I did a huge block of acute medicine, so I was basically on call for like four months straight. And before you think, oh my goodness, that sounds dreadful, it was actually incredible. I was able to be on call but not in these crazy rotated shift patterns that they give you because I was able to choose my own hours I chose hours that enabled me to sleep too and not to do these ridiculous back-to-back -back 13 hour shifts for two weeks and um, so yeah it was amazing I was able to clerk loads of patients just work in acute medicine which is a specialty that I love and um, I was able to hold the crash bleep a lot and get a lot of experience in that and um, and then where did I go after that I feel like I moved back and forth for a bit then I did some more elderly care and now I am currently on respiratory, so the lungs doing that kind of medicine. In and amongst all that medical work, I did a few on calls for surgery. I shadowed the National Organ Retrieval team for a week. If you saw on my Instagram, I literally went around the country with the National Organ Donation Retrieval team, which was incredible and um, so basically i've done a lot <laughs> i've done a lot of different specialties that i wouldn't have been able to do if i had not withdrawn from my f2 job don't get me wrong i love the specialties i was in for f2 but i truly feel like i've had more experience and more exposure by locoming and by doing a lot i've also learned a lot i'm now able to do so many procedures i can do acidic drains acidic taps a load of pleural procedures from respiratory i can put in pleural drains i can do lumbar punctures i can just do many more things than i wouldn't have been able to do before so the fact that you are you know basically service provision means that you will be asked to provide services and um, the nature of medicine is that the seniors are always teaching whether you're in training or not in training so I've really been so blessed and I'm so grateful for all the seniors who've been teaching me loads of skills and about the different specialties and it's been great I've been loving absolutely loving it Apart from being able to do loads of different specialties and learning lots, um, I've really enjoyed the flexibility, so being able to do my athletics training, it has not been easy at all, um, but I've loved the fact that I've been able to be me. <laughs> Like really be myself this year and you know be a doctor and love my career but also be Sarah and love my passions and my hobbies I think that is something that is so easily lost when we start the world of work so I'm really grateful to have this time to be able to really pursue the things that God has put on my heart as well as still pursuing my career thank God for that opportunity one of the downsides of locoming has definitely been the pay I think I'm currently owed about 50 hours pay if not more and um, chasing up pay when it just for some reason just doesn't go through is actually really stressful it is so stressful to check your bank account on a payday and see that you haven't been paid another thing i was concerned about was not building my cv in the traditional way but as i was doing my appraisal i realized that i'd actually been able to personalize my cv more than I had imagined. The things that were on there, for example, the National Organ Retrieval Team, all the acute medical work, Acute Medicine Awareness Week I was able to take part in, being on BBC Radio 4, talking about blood donation, being on the Grapevine TV show, all these opportunities that have come up have been amazing and I've loved being able to grab them with both hands because I've had that flexibility with my rotor. When I went down to London to a parliamentary event to discuss the change in the English law surrounding organ donation, I was able to book that off work and go down and take part in that. And so in terms of building my CV, I would say that this year has actually been really great for it. I would give you the advice of do the specialties you want to do and just speak to consultants. Consultants are so keen for juniors who have time and who are passionate. Time and passion are two, <laughs> I don't want to say rare things in the medical field, but they are super appreciated. If you go up to a consultant, you just tell them, hey, I love your specialty. I'd love to do it one day. What can I do? Can I do a paper? Can I research with you? Can I do an audit? Can I just sit in your clinic? Like you would be surprised, like the, the amount of things I was literally able to retrieve organs, like be in theatre with the National Organ Retrieval Team because I spoke to a consultant who was amazing, so, so skilled. And I said, please, can I just learn from you? I just want to shadow your on calls and, and see what the job is like, see if this is the career for me. I had teaching sessions with him. And next thing I knew, I was perfusing kidneys that we had just retrieved. I definitely encourage you not to just sit back and kind of let the ear wash over you. I mean, if, if you just want to travel and have fun too, totally. If you're starting locoming and you just want to have a great chilled year, go for it but if you still want to like 
be on it with medicine, just go for it. There are opportunities everywhere when you just ask, when you just walk up. I literally walked up and just introduced myself to this consultant and was like, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you, I'm Sarah. And now I'm super blessed to be have been able to work with him and to know him he's a great mentor so yeah definitely it can be a great opportunity for networking i guess and just learning and just enjoying medicine because i can't stress to you enough how much i love my job i truly love my job i love being a doctor and i have been loving locoming this year and if any of you are nervous or are about to do it and you know need some encouragement i would just say go for it enjoy yourself make the most of it definitely make time to travel i haven't traveled this year because obviously the reason i took time out was to athletics and so my travel i guess we'll just have to wait <laughs> um but yeah that's kind of all i can think of for now um, I'm going to be locoming again next year, um, so still training, still figuring life out. Um, I'll probably be doing it for a couple of years to be honest, but I'll keep you guys updated if anything new comes up, if anything changes. Um, please leave me a comment letting me know any questions. Um, I'd love to answer your questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, yeah, thanks for being my internet friends and for your kindness and love and support and just chill vibes. I love your chill vibes. Um, I will see you guys in my next video. <laughs> okay. I don't know why I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. Yeah, I'll see you guys soon, yeah? Yeah, see you soon. Bye. <laughs>